Remember this moment. The country will for generations. How does it go? What does it mean? Let's bring in David Axelrod and John Kasich. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on a heavy night. John, I start with you. This is your party. Not since the Red Scare uh, have once good men and women been dragged into this kind of sabotage of our democracy and social norms. What do you say to Chris, these attorneys general? <laughs> Chris, driving, driving over here tonight, I was trying to figure out what I could say because I, I, I can't believe what I am seeing in our country. These Republican leaders, and think about this, 18 attorney generals across our country, members of Congress, you just were talking about the Republican leader. You know, I, I've just become convinced that these leaders are morally and ethically bankrupt. I don't know how they can look in a mirror. I, I don't, I, I just, I'm, I'm flabbergasted about this. I mean, these are attorney generals. These are people who are in a position to be able to uphold the law. And for them to be joining into something like this, I'm glad to see that the attorney general in Ohio did not join this, this amicus brief. And, you know, it's, it, it's, it's the leadership has just lost it. I, I, they're just, they're, like I say, they're, they're bankrupt. And Chris, the reason why my heart's bleeding is, you know, I've been a Republican all of my lifetime, but I'm an American first. And what I see happening here are the people who are supposed to be the shepherds and lead the flock in the right direction. These are shepherds who are not treating the flock right. The flock is scattered. And it's, it's a tragedy for my party and a tragedy for our country that we're seeing this just morally and ethically bankrupt. I don't know what else to say. It just, it's just, it's so upsetting. I've been upset about this from the moment I heard about it. I've, I've been losing my temper about it. But I wanted to come in on here today and not just be yelling and screaming. What I've had to say is as is, is strong as I can possibly say. And I'm going to look at that list of Republicans in the House who sign on to that. It'll be really interesting to see that as well. Mm -hmm. For those that are watching, you know, stand up for your country. Acts, even if the court acts as it just did and throws this out because there is no merit behind the claim uh, that we didn't see in the Pennsylvania case that was just 9 nothing. just the effort portends a level of division that you and I have never lived through before. They never even did this to Obama. Uh, even all the stuff that happened on the ACA, that was about policy. This is about a deeper principle that they just don't want to accept anything but their own aims. What does this do for Biden? Yeah, well, obviously, uh, you know, it, it doesn't portend good things, especially because you know that Trump is just going down the street uh, and setting up the resistance from whatever television studio he's going, going to land in. Uh, and he's going to take the hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars that he is fraudulently raising off of phony claims of vote fraud uh, and use that to weaponize, uh, you know, his own movement and to menace Republican politicians. And this is, you know, they're acting out of fear. Let, let's just be clear about one thing. The president said the, uh, yesterday, he said, let's see who has the courage to do it. Everyone in this country knows is right. Let's talk about courage. Courage are those uh, secretaries of state and election officials who, uh, who uh, under threat of violence against them and their families uh, and, and political repercussions uh, did their duty counted the votes, verified the votes, recounted the votes, uh, and, uh, and proclaimed a winner based on the will of the people in their states. That is courage. That is courage. What these people are doing, these 18 attorneys general, uh, the members of Congress, you know, Representative Johnson said, the president is eager to see the list of who signs on. What do you think that means? What do you think that means? These people are cowards. They're cowards. So let's be clear of who's showing the courage and who's showing uh, cowardice here. But it does make for, uh, it will be problematic uh, for Biden because Trump is not going to do what other presidents do. He is going to try and lead the resistance from outside and he's gonna threaten Republicans who don't do what he wants them to do. I think Trump set him up for a suicide mission and the lead kamikaze is now Ted Cruz. He wants to argue this case. 
you know, in favor of the man who said all these horrible things about his own father, his own wife. Do you think this is the moment that makes or breaks Ted Cruz, Governor? Well, I don't know, makes him or breaks him for what? I mean, he's got elected <laughs> to the, got reelected to the Senate and, you know, I'm not going to be projecting his political future other than to say those people who have operated in a morally and ethically bankrupt way at some point will be held accountable. But let me tell you the other thing I worry about, Chris and David, both of you. When these kind of things happen, and you have all these people that are involved in this suit and all these claims going back and forth, there are going to be a big chunk of Americans who are going to think this was not a legitimate election. And that already has a, it's it, already it, happening. It has, an er, it has an erosion. You know, it has a sort of an erosion at the base of what we're all about. I don't know that and, that's the right somehow, metaphor. I think it's a sinkhole, Governor. I think this is yeah, a sinkhole. Yeah. It's not an erosion. Tomorrow, we just got information in my head uh, while you were speaking. The president is holding a lunch tomorrow at the White House with Paxton, and we don't know how many, but the invitee list are the rest of these attorneys general. Acts, they're going to put it on mm -hmm. full display that yes. this is what this See, country not, is going to be about. I am not sure. But, but before I came on, I was talking to some of my friends, and, and Chris and David, I'm not sure what is going to happen when he leaves. I'm not sure that he's going to command the attention he currently gets. I'm not sure that he's going to have this Svengali spell on all these members of the Congress and leaders in the Republican Party. I am not sure that that, that that might just begin to fade away because I think over time people are going to wake up and say, look, I just saw a poll the other day that said like 85% of the American people want the Congress to work together. I am not convinced that he's going to have the power that we think he's going to have. Part of it's going to be up to the media as to whether they want to give them oxygen or not. I'm whether they you. want to um, give them. John, I'm with you there. Well, let's well, get to that place. Yeah. Last word to you, Axe. Yeah, yeah, part of the uh, part of this is where the voters go, John. 83% of Republicans say they doubt the legitimacy of the outcome of this election. He's already had a corrosive impact. And if these Republicans, there may be some heroes among them, but if these Republican members think they're risking their careers uh, by defying yeah. him, uh, they're, they're, uh, very few of them are going to be profiles and courage. That's why profiles and courage was such a thin uh, volume. I, I, I would just con con conclude by saying this. That Republican Party ain't what she used to be. There are a lot of people that left that party who are no longer in that party. And that base has shrunk. How much it's shrunk, we'll have to see. But, well, David, there are a lot of people that left and helped elect Joe Biden, President of the United States, um, who were Republicans. Well, look, so you know, they, like to play with, they like to play with ugly language about what comes next and violence and this and that. No. It's got to be about decisions about men and women of goodwill. We'll see if your party really changes and splinters off. We'll see if it happens on the left. Who knows? Uh, there are a lot of reasons to believe if you can keep the money even, you'd be better off with four than two parties. But we are in a moment in history right now, and I think people are sleeping on how significant this is. But we will see in the coming days what this will mean for our collective history. David Axelrod, John Kasich, I'm honored to share Thank this you. moment with you two men of goodwill. <laughs> Thank you. And look, I know you keep saying Thank we shouldn't have to talk about the election anymore, but this is what happens when people in power are willing to poison a process. I should be talking to you about the pandemic killing more of us than ever before in a single day. But it doesn't work. We're not moved. We're moved by animus and division, and I can't stop it. But I have something you need to hear. The adults, the deaths, the numbers, it's numbing. What about the kids? I heard something today that just broke my heart, and I didn't think that could happen anymore. But if you want some context of what's happening this holiday season, I want you to hear from some kids. And I want to bring on one of the lawmakers who can still have a chance at making something rational happen when it comes to relief. Let's get after it.